hello children so in this uh, video i will be beginning with the chapter tissue so basically in this chapter tissue you will understand what is tissue why cells are organized as tissue different types of plant tissues and different types of animal tissues it's a very interesting chapter though long but um, see uh, first of all let us understand what is tissue if we go by the definition tissue can be defined as a group of similar cells performing a specific function so similar cells coming together and they will be performing a particular function that is called a tissue for example the best example to understand uh, tissue is if we take the example of blood now when you take the example of blood blood is made up of different cells like white blood cells red blood cells and platelets and they are all in a liquid uh, medium called plasma and why blood is regarded as a tissue because all these cells similar cells they are performing a common function that is the function of transportation they help in transportation of different substances so therefore blood is regarded as a tissue so why cells needs to be arranged in a tissue now you see we know that in unicellular organism uh, suppose in case of an amoeba all the functions of obtaining nutrition nutrients excretion respiration all the work are done by the single cell now what happens in multicellular organisms multicellular organisms like we human beings we are made up of billions of cells and if all the cells have to do all the functions they will be overloaded and the functions will not take place properly so what happens in multicellular organism the different cells are organized as tissue so that there is proper division of labor so that the work is distributed and uh, for specialized function and all the functions are done properly like uh, nervous tissue they carry the electrical signal in your body blood it is carrying the different nutrients muscular tissue they are causing contraction and movement so different tissues are performing specific functions okay so first we come to different types of plant tissue so plant tissue can be broadly classified as meristematic tissue and permanent tissue so meristematic tissue are those tissue which are in a state of i have written here uh, where the tissue the cells of the tissue are in a state of continuous division so these are the tissues which are in a state of continuous division and therefore helps in growth of plants so since the cells will keep on dividing in meristematic tissue therefore the growth of the plant will take place now this meristematic tissue based on their location or position where they are actually located they can be classified as apical meristematic tissue lateral and intercalary i'll be explaining this to you and permanent tissue permanent tissue based on the composition means what they are actually the cells the kind of cells they are made up of they can be classified as parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma uh, that is simple permanent tissue simple means they are made up of the same type of cells so these are the three types of simple permanent tissue and there are two types of complex permanent tissue like xylem and phloem why complex because they are made up of more than one type of cell so now in this video we'll be uh, basically discussing about the your um, meristematic tissue so if we look at this particular diagram out here i hope it's clear okay fine so if you look at the diagram let's say there is a diagrammatic representation of a plant uh, this portion is the root there's the uh, shoot there's a branch now the three types of meristematic tissue uh, apical apical means apex so these kind of meristematic tissue will find at the tip of the plant at the shoot apex and at the root apex next we come to so division of apical meristem will help in growth uh, in the length of the plant next we come to lateral meristem lateral means side suppose stem stem are generally what cylindrical in shape so this type of uh, meristematic tissue is found in the form of a layer around the circumference so if you take a longitudinal section if you cut a plant like this they will appear this tissue will appear to be on the sides so that's why i have shown it on the side so lateral meristematic tissue so division of lateral meristematic tissue will help the plant to increase in its girth girth means thickness and the third type it is called intercalary intercalary now you see in plants there are some thick portions in the stem which are called the nodes i'll be showing you nodes so um, intercalary meristem is found on either side of the node 
So division of this intercalary mesenchyme helps in elongation of the region between the two nodes which is called internode and it also helps in growth of axillary part which will ultimately grow into a branch. So let us have a look at a plant here, I have got a plant for you all. So there is a, by looking at the flowers we can say it belongs to the mustard family though it is a, it was growing uh, in the wild, whatever. So you see in a typical plant if you see the growth of the branches now this is the main stem now from the main stem this is one branch which has grown out this is another branch which has grown out so these portion from where the branches have grown see another branch is coming out here so this portion between uh, from where the branches have grown out these are called the nodes they are slightly thicker it is very clear in case of Ereka nut uh, tree uh, Ereka nut means Tamul in Assam as we call uh, or in coconut you can see the nodes very clearly in sugarcane you can see the nodes very clearly so these are the node portion and you should always remember any kind of growth whether it is a leaf or a uh, branch or a flower all, all will always grow from a node there is no growth in the internodal region and this portion between the two nodes is called internode. So, and this is the tip, the apical portion. So, uh, this um, apical meristem is found in the tip portion of the plant, whereas in the root tip portion of the plant. Lateral meristem will be found inside the stem on the sides and intercalary meristem, suppose there is the node, it is found on either side of the node. So, these are the three locations of a typical meristematic um, you can say plant uh, meristematic tissue sorry so now the cells which will make up the meristematic tissue what are the properties of those cells let us have a look first property is that the cells have a thin wall now you should remember all the properties of the cells of meris which makes up the meristematic tissue all those properties are based on the common function that the cells are in a state of continuous division. So number one, the cells have thin cell wall. So thin cell wall because the cells are continuously dividing. If the cell walls are thick with lots of deposit, it will, it will be difficult for the cells to divide. Therefore, the cell wall is very thin. Second, means they are made up of just cellulose. No other deposit is there. Second property of the cells is that they have dense cytoplasm. Now you should remember that the cells are actively dividing cells and for forming new cells they will be requiring raw materials. So where raw materials are stored, raw materials are stored in the cytoplasm therefore the cytoplasm is very very dense. Then um, they have prominent nucleus, prominent nucleus because all the information for formation of new cell for rapid division all those information will be stored where will be stored in the nucleus. So the nucleus is quite prominent and active nucleus. Cells are living and metabolically active. So all the meristematic cells are living cells and they are metabolically very very active. They are not dormant, they are not that just their functions are going on. They are showing a lot of biochemical activities inside them. And the fifth point, they do not have vacuole. Now we should remember what is the function of vacuole. Vacuole actually helps in storing of different food materials and all. Now generally what happens, you all are in your growing stage, so you should know most of you no matter how much you eat you do not become fat the reason is that it is the stage of your growth so whatever you eat that is metabolized for your growth but for our case whatever we eat no matter how less we eat will become fat and that is the same thing which happens meristematic tissues are rapidly dividing tissue so there is hardly anything to be stored so since nothing is to be stored everything gets used up that's why such cells which con uh, constitutes meristematic tissue, they do not have a vacuole. And another property, the common property is there, the main property that is the cells of meristematic tissue are in a state of continuous division. So all these are the properties which you will find in the cells which constitutes meristematic tissue. Thank you. In the next video, I will be discussing about different types of permanent tissue in plants.